My name is Eugenia and I am a certified personal and leadership development coach, but there's more to me than just that. But this is currently my job and I love, love doing that because it gives me an opportunity to add value to people like yourself. And this is just a bit of me. So I don't know how we met. Some of you I do know. <laughs> it's now you're new to me. Huh, good to know. So most people have seen me in the STEM area. Some see me in the coaching area. Some see me in a different business. But I am made up of so many things, not just uh, one. Basically, I'm Girl on the Move. It's a name I picked up um, when I left my job. <laughs> a good paying job. And that's a whole story on its own. And I started discovering a bit of me, um, who I am, what I like, and who I like to be more of. And I've never turned back. And it's been a journey that's been challenging and a blessing as well. With that, I've become a STEM ambassador. So you see me, I think the last program I went was the inauguration of a STEM academy that was hosted by the Ministry of the Minister of Education and the President of Ghana. So it was quite a privilege to be invited to that event. Um, I do a bit of mentoring for women and young teens. So I say I raise teens and I empower women. I do that a lot. It's very satisfying for me. I can do that without being charged, uh, without charge. And I, I really do love that to see that impact being felt. So that is a bit of me. I call myself impact strategist because whenever you give me an assignment and I do this with the companies I work with, I don't just go and share books. I don't just go and stand in front of someone to talk. I try to make a lasting impact. So I ask myself, what can I do with this opportunity that can continue to bless whoever comes on board? So that is a bit of me, but you can call me girl on the move. So that that is that. I see Cynthia is on the move somewhere. Okay, so how to get the best out of this? I know some of you are engaged somewhere, but it will be best if you can get a notebook and a pen because I'm going to be asking you some questions and I would like you to jot some things down. You'll be putting some things in the chat and I want you all to be super, super involved. So if you can get yourself a notebook and a pen, I'll give you just two seconds. So just rush off and go get yourself something that you can keep it, okay? The results that we see are yours. You're not going to share with me, So, but you need to put them down. I also ask that you be fully present okay so if you can be viciously uh honest with yourself so as i said this is not a goal setting class this is not a vision board creation it's, it's it's a time for us to take a pause in our daily lives and to reflect to be able to refresh for this new year okay i'll tell you why it's important to do that pretty soon awesome i want you to also bring your full self that is ask me question put it in the chat type please and share your experiences so i'll be calling some of you on um you'll have to volunteer i won't force you to come on board and bring your own energy okay i want you to feel this class and afterwards feel free to review it it will give you time to assess what you've said and then list out your action plans after this okay so one thing i like to do whenever i do these classes is a check-in it's a time for me to get to know you a bit. I've told you a bit of me. Um, so let's do a check and I ask you a few questions so I get to know you. And then you also tell me something interesting about you. So I'm going to ask you about two questions. I hope this works. Yes. So the first question is you put in a chat, where are you joining us from? Uh, are you in Ghana? Are you in your mother's room? Are you in the market? Are you on the roadside? Where are you joining us from? And the second question is, on a scale of cut, what is your mood today? And what does that mean? So are you cut number one, cut number eight, cut number seven? What does that even mean? Or even your cut number 12, which means your emotions cannot even be expressed by these cuts. Okay, y'all say, yeah. Yo, what's your full name or your first name? I'm quite curious to know. I only see your, but I don't know if that's you. Yolande. Oh, nice to meet you. So on a scale of cut, what's your mood today? Renette is in Tema. Okay. <laughs> You're in the hall. Six, nine. Oh, some are excited. Nine. Okay. Okay. Nine, no comment. <laughs> what does that even mean? 
When you say you're six, when you say you're nine. Oh, Dana is a six. Is that excited or you are weird or what does that mean? I wonder who will be a four or three. All of the above. Good for you. <laughs> Happy and a good day. Ah, that's really good. And I like that massage thing you're doing. You're excited. Ah, you landed. That's nice. Awesome. It's good to have you. Great. I hope that we keep it up. Number five. That's also an option. <laughs> you can't be bothered. <laughs> Hi, Ayura. You're excited. Excited is what number? Yaira, what number is that? And where are you joining us from? I think it's taking time to come. Excited six. Oh, okay. So you excited at six. Nobody's eight. Nobody's cruising like number one. You're yeah, joining from Ghana. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in and then we do this reflection. I hope you have your notebooks ready. Adenta. Oh, it's in Amhai. So let's do some reflection, okay? So if you have your notebooks and your pens ready, please put yes. And put no if I should wait for you for a second. I'm going to just ask you a few questions. These are things I did. Questions. Well, some of the questions I asked myself in December. So in December, I did my year in review just to know where I am and so that I can know where I'm going. And the reason being that if I ask you right now, which direction is the closest door to you? I would say that my, the closest door is just here. So you see the direction of my hand. Okay. If I should turn, this is like 90 degrees. And I ask myself, what's the, the direction of the closest door? Now my hand is this way. So the angle has changed. What I'm trying to say is good to know where you want to go in life it is good to have a vision make it plain write it down but if you don't know where you are how can you know the direction in which to take to get to where you want to go that is why for me it's really important to take a pause and then review where you are so you reflect on how the year has been so that when you are setting your goals it becomes more realistic and you know how to get there okay if i say which direction to go to london bridge um, how would I get to London Bridge? I have to know where I am. So where I am, I'm in Ghana right now. I know I have to take a car to the airport and then take a plane uh, to London and then take a car to the bridge. But maybe some of you may be in London, so you don't need to take another plane. So you just need to take a car. Do you get it? So that's what I mean by you need to do a review, know where you are so that you can set realistic action, realistic plans as to where you want to go. Okay, we'll do go certain later, but this is just for your reflection to be able to know how and where to go. So the first question, one word to describe, this is to you, you don't need to put in the chat, okay? So one word to describe 2021, how was that for you? I'll just give you like 10 seconds. These are things I've already answered, I have it in my notebook here. So I'll tell you how mine went later. So one word to describe 2021. And then what were your favorite moments? Favorite moment of 2021. And then three things that you, that did, uh, you wished should have happened, but didn't really happen. Three things that you wished happened, but didn't really happen. Maybe as you wanted or didn't even happen at all. The next one is three things that happened that you didn't even anticipate would happen. So I'll give you a few seconds to to go through these four questions and then we'll go to the next. Okay. Awesome. When you're good to go, tell me, give me a thumbs up or something so I know that you're good to go. So one word to describe 2021. 
what were your favorite moments in 2021 not your entire life <laughs> just this year and what three things did you wish happened that didn't really happen and three things that happened that you didn't anticipate that you are really grateful for that it did happen do we have our answers ready okay if you're done with the answer can you please let me know in the chat if you're done so it could be a thumbs up or you're done Renette okay who else y'all is done hi Nettie thanks for joining so we are just answering these questions okay you just joined so you're going to the next one oh good and the next one is who were your favorite people in 2021 and what did you learn from them and your relationship who were your favorite people it could be one person it could be three people but who were your favorite people who are your favorite people what achievements or wins are you are you most proud of in 2021 what did you do that you were most proud of what are the three biggest lessons of 2021 and then i'll just add this one what are your top goals for 2022 the three biggest lessons and then your top goals for 2022 Again, when you're done, you just give me a thumbs up or write done and we'll go. Are we done? Okay, Renette says done. Okay, yeah, you have to say done. Is everybody okay with this? Okay, Yolanda too says good to go. Awesome. So how did this set of questions? So it's just, just eight questions. I answered, I think 12 or so, but I just handpicked just eight so that we'll be able to get through this quick. How, how did these questions go for you? Was it, how revealing was it? Um, which question was the hardest for you to, to join, uh, to answer, I mean, and what was, what revelations did you get from this was anything difficult or it just you already knew it anybody wants to come on uh we can have a chat so you just raise your hand and then i'll allow you in i just want to have a chat with you so yeah yeah should i you can unmute yourself and then we can talk yes please this yeah you're yes please awesome yeah yeah hi nice to meet you nice to meet you so you said describing your year in one word was difficult why what was the difficult part i mean it got me thinking deep that if i'm to summarize my year in one word how exactly am i going to you know um, describe it because there were lows there were high points mm. Um, there were amazing, you know, experiences, there were bad experiences. And overall, I was trying to think which which word could describe it, could best describe all the experiences I encountered. Mm. And so what did you come up with? Yeah, it got me thinking. So I paused with that question. It started to come back <laughs> on the word. I don't know. I, I, I should say it was, <laughs> it was, I don't know how. It was full of lessons. Mm. It was a learning period, a learning year for me. Let me say it that way. Interesting. So it was a learning year. Of good I don't know if or more of bad. I'm right. There's no wrong or right question. Right. It easy. was more of good actually. Oh, it was more of good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Any yes. other question was shocked to you or you found you found it a bit difficult? Or anything came as a surprise to you? Anyway, anyone else want to share what they got from this? 
Rena said she journaled a lot last year. That's good. So at least you were up to date. You were more in touch with your personal self. So that's good. I never did. So I had some difficulties in in doing that. Good. Thank you for sharing. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to share. Um, hi. Hello. Who am I talking to? Renette. Hi, Renette. Yes. So, like I said, last year I started journaling and it wasn't something that I set out to do. I didn't plan to journal. Mm -hmm. I, last year was a year of growth for me because I had um, left my my 95 and 2020 and i was trying to figure out myself so it was a lot of <laughs> new things and um journaling was a way to free my head from <laughs> all the thinking and worrying and in that i got to know myself better and learn a lot of things about myself so yeah interesting so what were your biggest lessons if i may ask um biggest lessons that would be question number seven yeah. okay so for me the first thing is asking for help is not a bad thing mm. um the i think that was the best thing i learned the fact mm -hmm. that it's so you don't have to do things alone for yourself i feel like yeah a lot of people have been made to think that if you want to succeed you have to be the super person you should be able to navigate life no there's a reason why um there's this African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go exactly. together. Exactly. And it's something that really shaped my life. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be this hyper-independent person because I didn't want to worry people. But I said, no, <laughs> I can't be suffering alone. So that's one thing I changed. And I also learned that it's okay to pivot. So when you set out to do something and it's not working... See, you can just say, okay, let me try something else. Let me change this. Let me change that. Yeah. And then the last thing. Yeah. The last thing is that everybody has a story. So everybody you meet is, is the way they are because of experiences they have had and things that they have gone through. And when I learned that, it was easier for me. Not, not that I was excusing bad behavior, but it was easier for me to relates to people that I felt were being like horrible in quotes, like horrible people. But instead of being like so angry at them, I go like, okay, you know what, let me just ignore and move on. So that's what I would say. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And just one last question. What are your top goals for this year based on what you've learned? <laughs> Okay, so this year, I want to get to know myself better. Um, I really like the fact that I learned a lot of things about myself. I think there's more. I want to increase my income and <laughs> I want to learn how to ride a bike. <laughs> I do like that. I like the diversity of your goals and that's what we're going to talk about next. Like you have your financial goals there you have your personal goals your personal development goals and you have something that brings you fun and i do i do like that i think you're on the right path so thank you renette for sharing thank you too so much okay so the next is wheel of life okay there's also another reflection too that i love 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 because the wheel of life, the reason why I was asking Renette about her goals is sometimes when we set goals, we realize that it's only financial and business. Sometimes we add a bit of spiritual, somewhere in the middle of the year, we add health and fitness. But have you considered that your life is more than one sphere? It's just, it's just vast. It's not even up to eight components, it's more. I just put it in eight because it makes it easier. It saves us time and it covers most parts that we deal with daily. So that's why I love the Wheel of Life. It lets you assess more what you have. So on your notebooks, if you can take a new sheet um, in your notebook or go on a new page, and then you just draw out this circle, right? And then divide it into 10. So you draw 10 smaller circles in uh, nine more inside so that you have 10 sections. And then you divide it into eight components. And then you put each category there. So you have health and fitness, spiritual, family, relationships, career, creativity, personal development, and finance. Okay, and then we're going to see how we did in a year. 
So once you're done with the, your circle, with this diagram, I can send it to you guys later if you want. So there you do it on your own. But for now, let's just draw the circle and try to divide it as we see on the screen, okay? If you're done, you put in a chat so I know that you are done and ready to go. And I'll do this with you. I did it earlier and my score, I didn't really like it to be honest with you. When I first did this review, it got me very angry at myself because I know what I'm capable of. And to realize that I did that bad, it, it really put me off. And then I became sad. It's like I went through a roller coaster of emotions in December. If you were by me, you would not be my friend because I wasn't a nice person. And it was because I was doing these things. And I take it really personal to me. Um, and I was sad because I had all the opportunities to do better, but I made excuses. And if I tell you my excuse, you would think it's valid enough. And so, yeah, it should be down. But for me, I think I should have been better. So that's where I am. And so now I know where I'm going. Still with my excuse, but I'm going to be better. If you're done with a circle, please let me know, okay, with a drawing. So I can do this with you. A thumbs up or just something for me to know that you are here. Okay, so let me take it since Nana, Renette, Yolanda is done. <laughs> they are too fine. You are here. Cynthia says she's done. Great. So I'll take it that the rest are done too. So, so we're going to start together, okay? So basically, on a scale of 1 to 10, how did you do? Um, I'm going to annotate. I want to draw. I want to draw using this one. Okay. So, for example, for me, health and fitness for the year, I had... And this is based on what you know you are capable of, not what, um, not what someone else did that you're comparing yourself to, okay? You know yourself better than anybody can do. For me, in my health and fitness, I didn't get anywhere. So I'm going to score myself at three. I'm not being mean to myself. It's just where I know I am. Okay, I made some goals that I didn't really, really live up to. For my spiritual, I would say I did a bit better. So I'm going to score myself a five. So that's all you do. You draw an arc as to where you think you are. So if health and fitness is not how skinny you are. It's just your health goals. How healthy did you stay? Your food, uh, your diet, I mean, um, your exercise. Even your mind, how, how healthy are you emotionally, mentally? Did you work towards it? Or was it the same as 2020? Did you do anything to do better? Okay. Um, your spiritual life. Um, I am a Christian. I don't know about you. But how is your spiritual life like? How was your connection with something higher than yourself? Did you even set goals to make things higher? To, to be better? Okay, to center yourself and just submit yourself and just let things proceed. Your family and friends, how did you do on that? So for me, I did a fall. I didn't really do well with family and friends. I think it was a bit distant. I could have done better reaching out some more. Um, yeah. In relationship, um, this is you and a significant other. If you don't have one, um, what did you even do to love yourself even more? Okay, so this is for you, yourself. How did you love yourself more? How intentional were you about loving someone else as well? How were your relationships like? So for me, I also give myself a four right here. I did do something for myself, um, but I could have done better. I wasn't more intentional with myself. You see how I'm rating myself. It was that bad. My year was that bad. So career and business. Some of you may be in school. But what I ask always is, um, even though you're still in school, how intentional are you about growing into the person who has the career that you desire to be? So you don't need to be having an employment letter to know that you're in a career. 
okay you want to be in a fashion business what are you doing right now are you going for fashion shows are you learning from people are you making your own sketches and stuff what are you doing to grow your business and your career whether you're in it right now or you're in school or your home how did you do for me i'll give myself um i think this is a seven that i did work on from the beginning of the year and the end of the year the middle it was a mess but by the end i really put in a lot of effort to grow a lot one thing we miss out when we are doing our goals is creativity and fun we don't usually add it we miss out on that so how intentional about were you about adding fun to your life adding some creativity in your life learning new things getting uh getting new networks or play, being playful how how intentional were you did you learn anything new so that that is a skill for that i will give myself is this a four or is this a five i think this is a five yes give myself a five here and personal development a lot of people go for the finance and go for the health go for the career but they forget that when you win within you it's easy to win outside okay so how intentional were you or purposeful were you about your own personal growth did you make time to read some books did you do some courses that will better yourself were you intentional about the people you networked with because if you want to grow you need to involve people and not just anybody not just your classmates but did you seek out to be in environments that would better your life or you still lived in places where your energy is drained were you that intentional about your personal development so for that as well i would give myself as between a six and a seven so that is me and for finance hey that was my worst to be honest with you so i gave myself a two <laughs> um and so that is it so once you are done you try and join the acts like what i'm doing right now so that you see the shape of who you have ideally it would have been great if all the circles were in line you had a perfect circle but this is it i don't know how everyone else did but this is how i did to be honest with you and i started the year the reason why i was down was i started the year on a high note i was very optimistic i knew what i was doing i had my goals all written down and then life happened so what happened was my grandma was <laughs> went ill and up to now she's still sick but she was really ill that it really affected me she was the one who raised me so you can imagine it was like losing a mother sort of she's more of a mother than a grandmother and that was my excuse to not develop myself i didn't even realize it till the end it was my dad who took me aside and said it's good to be compassionate i see what you're doing is kind but you can't live the rest of your life like that no matter what you do whether you're sitting by her bedside 10 hours a day or you are out hustling what will happen will happen it wasn't a mean thing for him to say but it was an aha moment it was a realization for me that life still goes on and life happens and life is precious life is fleeting and it shouldn't stop me i should do other things yes to be able to compensate to be able to be with her but i shouldn't stop opportunities that come my way just because i wanted to be by her side and so i missed out on a lot of opportunities because of that you see it's it's a valid excuse but it it, it, it crippled me and I do go and see her once in a while. Well, not once in a while, I see her often, but I make sure that I hit my target. So that's why at the end of the year, if you check my socials, it was really, it, seemed, it looks really good. But in the middle, it didn't, it didn't seem good. And that's why I have <laughs> this kind of circle. I don't know about you, anyone wants to share how their circle went? Anyone wants to hop on? You can just unmute yourself or share your screen. Hi, who is talking? It's Yaya. Hi, Yaya. Uh, yes, so just like you, I started um, the year with very high hopes and expectations. <laughs> and I started with my goals clearly spelled out. I knew, yes, this was going to be my year. And 
as time went on, life happened. Yeah. And as I drew my wheel of life right now, it, it got me thinking. I, I didn't know if I was feeling disappointed or discouraged <laughs> or I don't know that feeling. I felt a bit disappointed in myself that who, who I could have actually done better. And it's a moment of reflection and thinking because it, it, it has hit me really hard. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I can do better. I could have done better. But then um, I know it's not, not too late. No. It's a lesson learned. Mm. Uh, as I said, love lesson. So that was it for me. There was um, what I used as an excuse because then I know how to doesn't hinder my progress in this year. So that that Amazing. is for me. Amazing. I'm glad that you even though you feel down, I also fell down you realize that it's not too late well once you still have life my dear we can we can always make up that's why i like the reflection okay we don't just jump and then set goals but where are you right now so this is my finance what then can i do if i have financial goals so let's say i want to buy a g-wagon this year but i don't know how much i have in my bank account i don't even know if i qualify for a loan I don't know where I am right now. How how do I expect by December to get at my G-Wagon? Do you get it? That's why you need to do this reflection. Know where you are and forgive yourself for whichever skill you are at and then work towards it for the next year. Let's say we didn't know, but now we know. So we are going to be better. Anyone else want to share? Thank you so much, Yaira. Okay, hi. Hi, who is this? Prisla. Hi, Prisla. Yes, um, I'm glad you shared this wheel of life. I think it has taken me aback and left me thinking, like you all said, right, rightfully, um, we started a year all <laughs> geared up, knowing very well that things are going to be better this year, but it looks like somewhere along the line, I mean, like she said, like Yaira said, life took its place, and so things didn't really go the way we wanted it. But then what I've realized about this wheel of life is that most of the time we center ourselves to one or two of them, which actually draws us back with others. For instance, if you want to only focus on your finance, it means that you have left others standing. It looks like you need to balance all these in order to be in the right wheel, to be in the correct wheel or to be in the right circles. So the little I have to say is that drawing from my wheel of life, yeah. I realized that, yes, I made time for family and friends, spiritual life, and a bit of uh, my relationship and health and time. Um, we were thinking that at least once you're working on so many things, like your career and your business as well, trying to balance all these things, meeting people and all that, things will fall in place. Because family and friends, yes, mm-hmm. they are the same people who bond you sometimes together when it comes to your career and your business. Because you, along the line, you need people to also hold you. To help you climb the ladder, you can't do it alone. So, personally, I think that I actually focused on the fact that oh, I have people who could also help. Even though we all say that we can't do it alone, we need people to help us to climb. And so, we also placed our hopes and what have we in some people that we were thinking could help us climb the ladder. Not really focusing on your personal development. And I think that is where I also went wrong. So, I think that I should balance it this year, and things will get better. So maybe I'll try to focus on my personal development, what I can do to help myself rather than thinking of other people because I think I centralized myself on family and friends too much because looking at my view, I think that's the highest. And it's not good enough because you need to balance it so that at least you can have a healthy, um, how do you call it, a good wheel of life. So the little I have to say is that we should all try to balance it so that at least we can have a wheel, a good mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. I think now that we know that there are different aspects of us, we'll be, yes. we'll be more conscious going forward. Um, yes. So that we don't give more time to one thing and then neglect. You might be good in your finance, but you realize that you use that finance to pay for your health and fitness, to pay for your relationships, you pay for your person. It, it will not work. But if they are all balanced, then you will not starve on one side. And that's why sure. I, I do love this, this reflection. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank so just going to the next one so just think about this if things were just going the way that you wanted 
okay we all have things happening in our lives and there's nothing stopping things from happening this again um this year yolanda is asking do i think it can be balanced i think we can work at it it won't be a hundred percent it's not balanced every time every year you find that sometimes you're doing well in your finance but because you're also working on your family it may not be the same number but it's improving what we are asking is you will not be too low on one and too high on the other that that would deplete you but you find that sometimes your family will balance somewhere that um, your finance cannot go or your personal development will pick you up where maybe your relationship is failing okay you don't need to be a hundred percent everywhere besides if you are 10 over 10 somewhere what you actually for me what you mean is then there's no room for improvement you are already max so for me the highest that i let myself go is maybe a nine a 9.5 and i know that there's still room for me to push even higher okay um i don't wish to be below five i don't wish to be in fact i don't wish to be below seven okay so finding the balance is not having all having nine or ten but being able to go to this category and find your peace or go to that category and find my peace so when my grandma happened um i put a hold on my personal development okay i put a hold on my finance i put a hold on my relationship i put a hold on so many things and i was just focusing on family and friends and you can find that draining and this is where family and friends i was all given i was not receiving and you realize that you become empty soon but if I was on my personal development and I'm reading books and I'm going on seminars and stuff, there's a feeling somewhere. My spiritual life is also filling me up. Something is filling me up. I hope I'm making sense in this way. Yolanda, does it make sense? Or you still have questions? Finding a balance is trying to find improvement. So you set a scale for yourself. What it means for me, uh, what spiritual growth means for me may be different for you. Okay, so maybe my fine, I want to be financially successful. What do I mean? Maybe for me is to have a thousand Ghana CDs extra in my bank account every month. Maybe for you is to buy a car, a house. You see, it's different. So once I know that I want a thousand Ghana CDs, I begin to ask myself, what then can I do? to be able to get a thousand Ghana cities. Do I have to pick a second job? Do I have to go begging by the streets? Do I, do you get it? it? It makes you aware. Then you realize that you give yourself more opportunities and open to more opportunities that come your way because you want that good in your life. It's not just about setting goals, but you realize that even the goals that you set will become aligned with what you want in your life, who you are in your life. I don't know if most of us are in Ghana, so it, you will get this. When we go to church at the end of the year, we all have this idea of takeover, this idea of being beautiful, this idea of success. But what does it mean for you? And by the end of the year, how do you know that you've taken over? Your year was successful. Your year was incredible. How do you know it? And so if you don't set a skill, if you don't measure anything, then how do you know that you've actually grown? Okay, so that's where the balance comes. You you get to learn. So you ask yourself these questions. What do I need to do? Maybe right now I'm at a three. What do I need to do to get a five or a seven or even a ten? And then you begin to work at it. And for me, I would ask that you take one at a time. Sometimes if you take it all together, you get stressed out. So today I just wanted to ask, what are the three areas we need to work on if um, in the next 90 days, okay, Let's say everything goes according to your plan. You had life on your own terms. What areas do you think you need to work on? If you can put it in the chat for me. So for me, it's my finance, it's my personal development, and it's on my relationships. That is me. Even though I was good at my personal development, I still want to work on that. So it's not what were you worse at that you want to grow. It's what do you want to grow on this year? Because things might have changed. Okay. What you may want last year might be so different from what you want this year. Ah, I like the creativity and fun. I lack a creativity and fun, but for my focus for the next 90 days, I am putting that at a halt, even though I will be open to, to it coming up. 
Okay, finance, personal development, creativity and fun. Who else? Health and fitness, relationships and finance. Okay. Anybody else? And as you're putting in the chat, just ask yourself, what will be the consequence if nothing changes by 2022 20, December? How will your life be if the scores you had today are the same by the end of the year? What would that mean for you? And then how would you make sure that it gets better? What's the guarantee that it's going to get better? Is it because you just said it's going to be better? This, this question I would like to know, what's the guarantee that it's going to get better? Is it because you just set goals or how are you going to make it better? Anybody wants to share? Okay, Manuela, health and fitness, personal development, finance. <laughs> Get on the mood, but how? Exactly. Yo, you want us to talk about this? Yolanda. Hello. Yes. Yes, please. Um. <laughs> okay. So how are you going to make yeah. sure it gets better? What's the guarantee? Yeah, you see? The problem is every year mm -hmm. you set goals and mm -hmm. then you start and then after you even forget that you've mm -hmm. told yourself that I'm going to be doing this or that. Okay. So, so you forget really, that you. Uh -huh. Yes. And what else? Forget and then after I'm not focused. You know. Or, I'm not really um, determined. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know. And I'm really thinking about you? how I can make a difference this year. Interesting. No, that that desire alone is a start. Mm. That you wish that it will get better. What will happen yeah. if nothing changes? What What do you think will happen? What's the consequence? I think. I think. <laughs> Like every year, hmm. at the end of every year, we have regrets. Why didn't, why have, uh, I wasn't able to do this. Hmm. Why was I not able to do that? But, and then you set the goal again, and then I uh, <laughs> realize that at the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the year, is the same thing. Yeah. So, so it's, it's true, it's going to be painful, one. but I would really love to. To, okay. do it differently this year so you said you want to do you want to better your finance your personal development and your creativity and fun yeah yeah because awesome. i realize i'm not having a lot of fun at all okay so you have to define what is fun for you mm. and and then we get it from there when you say finance um you have to define um what what it means to be financially successful by december 2023 once you have that mm -hmm. target and then we can work from there but one thing i want you to do so one thing i am personally doing is doing um, a vision board okay? okay so i'm good at writing my vision in a book and last year because of the wahalas i went through i literally closed my book and it was by my bed i never opened it so i lost focus on it but there's one thing about vision board i think i think it was priscilla who saw me I was cutting out pictures right, and I'm pasting it right in front of my uh, my bed. So when I wake up, it's the first thing I see. And so it begins to come in my mind. One thing I have in, was is a particular car. It's red in color. And I realized that each time I'm driving and I see that car, my attention just goes to that car. Do you mm. get it? It's like now my mind is focused that I want this thing. And the more I yep. want it, the more I begin to find ways of how to get it. So if right now someone comes to me and says, Eugenia, I want to dash you a car. I want to gift you a car. Which one do you want? Guess which one I would say? I would say the red one that I want. Because I'm that focused. I won't be confused. Do you get it? Or I have, I have money coming to my account. And I'm thinking, oh, how can I spoil myself? What can I do? I know what I want. So one thing I'll say is write your version down what you want right and mm. put it somewhere where you can see mine i did it in pictures you can do yours in words 
put it somewhere you can always see it we are doing this in a rush but that's it and also if you can get an accountability partner it's a big word but someone who would always be on you and say that okay you said you would do this how far have you gone and you've broken your goals into bits so maybe you want a hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year good mm -hmm. would you get it by december or you want ten thousand by january ten thousand by february do you get it yeah. so i want to read two books every month which means okay. by the end of the year i have 24 books which means every month i'm reading two right so that means every two weeks i have to read a book so i just finished my first one how to be a boss uh, by lady and i did that in two weeks i was supposed to finish on monday but something happened so i finished on tuesday mm -hmm. i have timed myself because I know that I'm doing 24 books, I don't leave it to chance and say, okay, let me pick a book whenever I finish, I finish. No, I set deadlines. I know I'm supposed yes. to finish at this time. Do you get it? If I finish early, I give myself a reward. Either I go and watch Netflix or I read another book that I like. And one thing I've also done is I've listed the books that I want to read in the first three months already. Okay. So I know what I'm going for. I'm not leaving it for, hey, which other book can I pick before I go look for another book? So you see, I'm being intentional with every step. I know myself, I know how last year was, and I don't want it to be the same. The problems I had last year are still there. They've not changed, but mm -hmm. I want to change. You understand? So yeah. define what your financial goals are be specific about them and then break them down every month. Okay, how am I going to get it? Your personal development, what does that mean? Does that mean you're reading more books or you're taking more courses? What, mm. what does that mean? Or you're getting new people into your life that you know will better you. Your creativity okay. and fun. Oh, maybe every holiday I want to go out and I want to go to the beach or I want to visit this new part in Ghana that I've never been. Do you get it? You realize that you begin to start saving for it. You begin to ask friends to join you on the trip. You become intentional so that when the holiday comes, you already have a plan. So that someone's yeah. plan will not come and come and cross your plan, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because we often do that. We often go along with what other people want for us because we ourselves don't have a plan for us. We have an idea of what we want, but we've not set a plan aside to do what we want. And so we always mm. laugh. So if you can just do this, I know I said a lot <laughs> in this short time, but first of all, just make your write down your visions. Okay. okay. Paste it somewhere you can you can see, and then just work at it one day at a time. It, you don't have to achieve all in a day. And if you leave all to December, you would you start getting the regret again. Because you can't read 24 books a yeah. year in, in, in December. Okay, I can't. Maybe you are superwoman. You can, but <laughs> I know that I know that I can. So that that is it for me. That is it for me. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Yeah, I want to, I want to add something to what you just said concerning yeah. writing down your goals. Mm. Yes, express that. Um, I would also want to add to the fact that, you know, sometimes we set our goals, but I also encourage that in as much as you're writing your goals for the year, you may not get everything from the onset or from the word go. So I would just encourage that anything that comes into your mind, you should also jot it down because you realize that by the end of the year, you may even have achieved what you wrote later than the ones you started with. And that one will sound encouraging to us or will look encouraging rather than the things that really, you know, you have what you really want to achieve. Mm. But then along the year, some of the things do come up. You're like, okay, I want to do this. And for me personally, what I have experienced is the ones that I write later, the ones that I'm able to achieve, the ones that I start with will be hanging, will be there. And at the end of a year, it won't sound encouraging if I didn't write those other ones down. It would be like I didn't do anything for myself. So I also encourage that we could always make sure that the pen is our friend, that the book is also our friend. <laughs> Everything that comes into your mind, just put it on paper. And then 
along the year you'll be taking what you'll be doing some may be short term some may be long term most times the long term ones are the ones that really take us um i don't know but they actually are very difficult to achieve sometimes i'll put in that quote because it may be long term so it may not be achieved that very year you may be working towards it but the short term ones also help because at the end of the year at least when you reflect you know that you've been able to do something for yourself so that's what awesome so the thing about setting goals is not about achieving it or getting that but it's also about the person you become whilst you begin to set your goals it's it's really important so for me as i'm getting to my 24 books done you realize that i become more knowledgeable that is the end goal it's not for me to take that i've got 24. do you get it i become um i'm opening up to more networks um having better conversations with people that is what i want you to notice that and celebrate every win. and even though you have a goal at the beginning of the year you see that as things change in the year um new opportunities will come new challenges will come and just watch yourself how you grow i i am on a journey to grow and so i'm being intentional and being being very observant about the things that happen to my life so i hope that you do the same as well there's this quote in Atomic Habits, it says, we do not rise to the level of our goals, but we fall to the level of our systems. The first day I heard it, I was going for a walk and I was just listening to this podcast and I just stopped. I was like, this is so true. Your systems are your standards, your habits, your behaviors. You do not rise to the level of your goals. Just because you set this goal doesn't mean that that is where you're going to go to. But what really determines whether or not you achieve your goals or not is the level of your system, the level of your standards, the level of your habits. What is your morning routine like? How do you go through your day? When you face a challenge, how do you rise up again? Those are your systems. And I don't even know if you have noticed how your standards are. Are you someone who say, I want to be healthy and fit, but you find yourself eating anyhow and anytime? Do you get it? that is your system you may be taking um all the lemons and all the concoctions in the morning but in the evening you are still eating off that is the standard you set for yourself so your goal you may not reach it because of the standards and because of the habits that you have if i tell all of you to maybe do this so where you where you are right i know i can't see you but as you're here and i tell you to do just clap your hands put your hands together like this For me, each time I do it, my right thumb comes on top of of my left. Every time I do it, I don't need to think about it. But if I want to be intentional to put my left thumb on it, I have to think and I have to take my time to to get it done. It doesn't come that easy. I don't know. It's it's a habit that has come. Whenever I'm brushing my teeth, I brush with my right. I don't brush with my left. Not that my left cannot, but I'm used to this. So if I want to change anything and use my left, I have to be intentional and I have to change my habits. Do you get If I want my day to be better, what am I doing with my morning to make it better? So I would encourage you that as we go through this year, let's not so much focus on our goals, but focus on the standards that you are setting for yourself. What are the habits that you have that needs to accompany the goals that you want to achieve? That's what I want us to focus on. So imagine it's December 2022 and everything worked out great, just as you imagined. Okay. What score do you want? So let's take the three areas of of our life and I want you to write it down in your notebook. What score do you want for those three areas? So for your financial, for your personal development, for your relationships. What score do you want ideally to have by December 2022? And then ask yourself, what actions do I need to take to be able to achieve this? So with Yolanda, as we discussed, just think it through. Finance, I want a nine. So what score do you want? Uh, You want nine, that's your score. What actions do you think you need to take to be able to get that? And then what standards must you rise to? How do you show up every day to make sure that you are the person that achieves this goal okay and then i want you to draw this table okay 
we talk that you do not rise to the level of your goals, but you fall to the level of your standards. And so as we are going in you, and I think Yolanda, this will really help you. Your old self versus your new self. I want you to draw this table down. So for example, your finance, what were the old habits that you used to have that are no longer going to serve you in achieving the financial score that you want? And what are the new habits? So we are not just taking the old habits off. We are incorporating new habits. So maybe you are someone who spends easily or you like a lot of shopping. So you were not actually reaching your financial goal. So that's your old habit that each time new money comes into my account, I go on shopping spree. It's good, but it's not helping you reach your target. Your new habit will be, I'm opening a new savings account and making sure that automatically when money comes into my normal account, it goes into this new savings account, or I'm going to buy a new bond or stock or what, treasury bill or whatever it is. I hope you get what I mean. So once you draw this table, you write your old habits that you know that are not serving you versus your new habits that are going to serve you into reaching this goal. Awesome. So let's do this quickly. I just put finance, relationship, and health and fitness. It's just an, it's just an example. Okay, yours might be different. And I just put three, three rows here, but you can have five, you can have two, you can have one. So what old habits do you need to let go of versus what new habit do you need to take on? And when you're ready, when you're done, please let me know in the chat that you are done. So I give you like, let's do this in two minutes because I'm looking at the time. You can complete later once we are done, okay? On your own. And you can even do it for all the eight categories that we put there oh renette is already done wow that was fast <laughs> renette do you want to share with us just one example an old habit you're letting go of and a new habit you're picking up um okay for me mine is health and fitness okay so the old habit is not eating healthy not eating enough times in a day mm. and then the new habit is I'm trying to eat three times a day at least. <laughs> at least. Okay, so what time? How are you going to make sure that it happens? Because it's easier said than done. How are you going to make sure? Yes, so I'm going to draw a menu. Okay. To help me, yes. And then consider um, cooking in bulk over the weekend. Interesting. And do some meal preparations too. Okay, what of setting an alarm to say that it's time to eat? I've tried that. <laughs> That's <laughs> <a> work. <laughs> okay, so we go with what you know would work. <laughs> your menu and stuff. Hopefully, I'm hopefully trying it to see if it will work. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. And I hope that um, you guys will share with me how your progress goes uh as the year goes um i would really like to hear your stories on how you've improved going forward however you can contact me um so yeah i'm just going to skip through so i see that yaira is done rosemon is done Prisla is done that's good so i'm assuming that everyone else is done or is catching up one way or the other so i don't know if you are serious about your personal journey this year i know i am i don't know about oh Prisla said impulse buying <laughs> okay um so i hope that you do something this year that will change it um i don't know if you're interested in your personal journey this year for me i am super super serious about it this year and that's why i'm doing this to see who else is ready to join me on that journey and just challenge one another to be better okay so i have this for you all of us, at some time or another, have agonized over making a decision. Some decisions are major decisions. And also there are a lot of small decisions that we don't make. That they tax our minds, they drain our energy. They create a lot of anxiety and nervousness and mental torment. Because we don't take care of it. We decide not to decide, which is a decision. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. 
the ghost of the ideas you never acted on, the ghost of the talents you didn't use, and they're standing around your bed angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? What kind of investment have you made in you? If your mentality is, I can't wait to see what happens great to me in 2022. You are going to get fish as a result. Life does not reward people who wait to see what happens. What you put in, you will get out. So if you want 2022 to actually be different, you have to not only be willing to visualize and manifest, you have to be willing to grit it out. You have to be willing to push through discomfort. Nothing that you're about to try or do or achieve that is worthwhile is going to be comfortable for you during the process of creating it. And I want you to take the word hope and I want you to throw it on the motherfucking ground and I want you to replace it with the word I will fucking do in 2022. Won't be up to you if you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now. You better step into this moment. You're only here for a short time. If you're not going to show people what's possible, who the fuck else is? Who's going to show your kids? Who's going to show your aunts and uncles? Who's going to show your fucking nieces and nephews? Are you going to fail those people? Are you going to buy into the narrative that you can't? Stand up for your dreams. Stand up for what you want in your life. Decide that your life is so meaningful to you, that you love you and you love life so much that you're going to stand up for something you want. You don't want to be a spectator. You want to get out in the field where the action is, and you will be amazed. After the struggle, there will be a calm period, and things will begin to click for you. Come out here with what you got. You don't have enough money? Don't worry about it. You got the dream. You must be patient, persistent, and positive, no matter what. But aren't there some guarantees you can give us? Yes, you're going to die. You can't get out of life alive. So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting like this is your last day on the planet. Okay. I don't know about you, but I've watched this video over and over again, and each time it gets me. You know, there's a saying that you can't expect anything new by doing old stuff. I think last time on social media, said you can't open a new door with old keys. That is so true, at least for me and even in the whole world. And so you can't expect to win in 2022 doing the same things that you did in 2021. You sleep, you wake up, you shower, you eat, you go to work, you come back like that. That is your routine. Nothing else changes. You can only change your patterns if you become intentional about it. It may take time for me to get my left hand to come on top of my right hand, but I can get it done. It is never too early or too late to start anything. Tony Robbins has to say, he says, I have a privilege and a responsibility to give back to life by becoming more of whom I'm created to be. We always want to see change happen outside. We wish for things to happen in our world, but it always begin with the inside. For me, if you win in any part of your life, it's your personal development. Once you grow on the inside, you see that it begins to influence whatever comes out. When I began calling myself Girl on the Move, that's when I started on this journey as uh, on personal development growth. And it has changed every trajectory. People tell me, aren't you going back to engineering? So I used to work as an engineer offshore. And I look at my life then. It was a good job. And I look at my life now, the level of my networks, the level of my knowledge, the people I get to meet, the impact I get to make versus when I was there, I see a big change. And yes, even now, if you put me back in the engineering field, I will still make more impact because of who I've become, who I'm growing to be. And that's why I was so sad and disappointed with myself last year that I let myself down. But this year, I'm willing to do new things. And so, um, 
taking new risks <laughs> that you find with me a lot i don't mind taking risks at all especially with my life and that's one thing because i know that i'm a god girl and he's always got me i don't know what stronghold that you have that keeps you but for me that is it and so i want to challenge you to come with me on a 28 day growth journey i'll let you know why it's 28 so i am actually going on a 90 day so i'm doing three full months and i'm seeing the change so i'm seeing where i am right now my health and fitness part so i'm checking my weight i'm checking my size um and then by the end of the 90 days have i read the number of books that i want to read have i grown the level that i want to grow and for you i just want to give you this opportunity to join me for just 28 days okay um to be intentional i didn't want to do the full 90 days because i didn't want us to stress too much or this is our first time of meeting and i want us to just focus on this little chunk and what i love about this 28 journey is you can repeat it okay it's something that's going to go with you so what i intend is that by the end of this 28 days your life will be so transformed if you take this journey serious if you become intentional you will see incredible results okay it's something that has been tried and tested and it's based on uh, john maxwell's book um, 15 laws of growth so there's this growth journey and this is what i just want to present to you so it's 28 days because i want to start from the 1st of february to the 28th so that when you get to maybe 6th of february you don't say oh i was lost which day are we on so february 1st is your day one february 6th is your day six february 10th is your day 10 so it's easy to get it done okay so this is a growth journey that i will be doing with you i'm starting my actually the beginning of uh next week so that i'm just a step ahead and i can coach you as it goes so that's what i'm doing for the next 28 days and if you are very intentional about your growth i would want you to come on this is not for anyone who is just oh let's see what this happens let's see how this year goes it's for someone who's very intentional about growth it's for someone who's willing to invest their time and their resources for their growth who wants to see incredible results and it's going to invest everything that it takes to get it okay uh brenda bashar said personal development is common sense but it is just not common practice and it's so true we all know that we need to improve in one way or the other but we tend to leave it for chance chance and luck but that doesn't happen it's something you have to be intentional about and it should be even your daily practice to want to grow to want to be better this change is inevitable. Something will definitely knock us off our ground this year. But personal development is a choice. You get to decide whether to grow yourself or not. I get to decide whether I'm going to plant a tree or not. Okay, you get to decide that. But something will always happen. So once you grow, you become much firmer. You become more resilient in life. And then there's this quote from um, John Maxwell. He says, everything we want in life will come through uh with our willingness to grow you can't give what you don't have and you can't lead where you do not go and this is so true it's easier to set goals and put it somewhere but if you're not willing to grow yourself if you're not willing to invest the time yourself you want to see a change in your family you want to see a change in the business you want to see a change in your boss but you are still remaining the same then where are we going so this is for those who are determined if you're like me you come on board this thing that this year is not going to be left by chance this year is going to be beautiful not because we set it in church not because we are hoping for it to be not because we set goals that we hope that it's going to be but because we are going to play our part to be very very intentional about this do you get what i'm saying do you agree with me yes or yes uh can you put it in the chat if you're still here with me or it's just me so for this 28 growth challenge, this is what you should expect, okay, for just 28 days. And mind you, you can repeat it on your own self, okay. You get a personalized growth plan. Why is it personalized? Because my growth plan is different from yours. I may be focusing on my finance, you may be focusing on your health, but it's going to help you. It's quite basic, so you can apply it to even all the eight areas. I would say take three, we work on three, 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 and then you carry it on okay so it's personalized you know which journey you want to go on and you can get there you get to ask, uh, explore different facets of your growth so even though we are exploring we are focusing on three you get to also explore on the rest so that you are not dragging the rest along 
we'll make sure that we are intentional about every part of our life but we're investing more in the very three that we said we want to hook up to and i'll be sending you teachings from john maxwell i told you this growth challenge is based on his book 15 lots of growth so i'll be sending you teachings every week on so this is four weeks every week on the 15 lots of growth um you get daily inspirations from me so i am girl on the move so it could be a video it could be an audio it could be a post whatever it is but you will hear from me every single day um i'll be accessible to you for you to message tell me where your challenges are i'll send you downloadable resources that will help you in your challenge so you have your own plan to help you design your own plan so i'm not going to say okay pick a notebook and write this thing you will have guided notes that will help you to develop it and you'll be a part of like-minded individuals as i said this is not a challenge for everybody so everyone who will be on it are people that you know are willing to grow are open to this challenge so when we are sharing something our ideas are similar even though they are so very diverse and then you get a group coaching so every week we'll have a call we'll discuss where we are at i'll share more tools with you to be able to assess your growth you're going to measure by the end of 20 days how 28 days how far have we come so that's what you can expect from this okay so this 28 days remember what we said you don't rise to the level of your goals just because you've set your goals and it's in front of you it doesn't we are going to question your systems you're going to question your standards we're going to form new habits okay they say it takes 21 days to develop a new habit so we are going to be with you hand in hand in doing this and mind you i'm taking it as well so i'm asking you are you going to be intentional about your growth this year um are you willing to commit 28 days out of 365 days of which you spent today's day it's 19 you spent 19 days of already to commit to your personal growth to challenge yourself which means letting go of some things and opening yourself up for new things mind you it's not going to be easy no challenge is easy if it was then all of us would be raising dumbbells and all that going for myths world and all that but it's not easy you have to practice 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 and that's what we are going to do and are you willing to invest in your growth when it comes to resources your time your money your energy are you going to willing to do that because that is what it takes to grow you need to change something in your life to be able to see something new come in your life so how much investment i keep on saying this are you willing to make an investment how much investment is required in this so today if you know that this has really helped you what we've done the tools imagine what 28 days of something like this is going to give you the revelation and the improvement you're going to do okay so normally i don't know if you've ever gone for a personal development course before normally what they charge in the industry let me just ask do you does anybody know what they charge in the industry for 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 a month or a week how much do they normally charge does anybody know yes no before i just tell you no Emanuela has never been okay anybody else no okay huh that's quite interesting okay so is it that you guys have never been on a challenge like this before well this is a start then so normally in a week what they charge and when i say in a week i mean five days so for a challenge like this normally they charge between 97 dollars and 149 dollars for five days so that means that in 28 days you will be required to pay 388 dollars now please don't run away yet <laughs> this is not what i'm giving you because this is our first time and as i told the group that we met in person i've had this class already in person we did it on 3rd of uh, january and so this is a virtual one um 388 dollars is what you will normally pay that is the industry price the lowest you would get okay check with tony robbins check with lisa nichols check with brendan Burchard, check with laura lyles these are the coaches that you find on social media a lot and this is what they charge and this is what i have paid for sometimes so that i know i could get better the year of 2020 and then the end of 2021 i really invested in my personal development and that's how come i can get up again and move and so i said since it's a new year 
we just we are just in the middle of january we are trying to so recover from all the holidays that we've had especially in ghana um i'm not going to charge you 388 what we are going to do is for a day you're just paying 199 dollars so this is even less than what you pay for the week in the industry price so for 199 dollars a day which means in 28 days you pay 55.72 dollars if you do the conversion in ghana cities that's around 345 or so dollars so that's the investment i'm asking you to invest uh, to make in your personal journey going forward to go on this 28 journey with me and as i said i'll be providing you with all the resources that i said where did i even put that yes you get all these going on and so i want you to take a breather don't run away yet is this something that you're willing to invest in yourself 199 dollars a day is it's less than your coffee that you buy it's less than your starbucks it's less than the food that you buy um your takeaways and all that but this is an investment in your life that would in, that would go ahead to help you achieve your goal at the end of the year and so that is what we are asking i will put the link let me see if i have to make that investment and you can do that with the link that i've sent you i'll send you all an email after this so you have the link again you can go and check it out that is what i have for 28 days but i'm also someone who likes to reward people that take action as i said i'm a girl on the move and i don't like to waste time on things that i know would benefit me so for someone who is like that okay if you should register between now and tomorrow midnight because I will see who, who hops on and what time you hopped on. I'm going to give you what I call the VIP package. So instead of doing 28 days, I'm going to give you two extra bonus days for your training, plus everything that you are getting. Okay, two extra bonus days will also involve your one-to-one -one coaching with me. So I work as a trainer and a coach as well. So we get to talk. The other one, I said we are doing group coaching. So we'll have a call and we'll talk and all that. But with this, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I set aside time, we book a time, whether in person or virtual like this, and we talk about your goals and we set milestones and we see how we're going to achieve it. You also have a free downloadable book. I'm thinking of adding a free course uh, from John Maxwell, the, the coaching uh, academy that I'm part of. So a downloadable book, if I get a free course, I'll add it to you. If you sign up today and tomorrow, you get this free book, uh, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. So for 28 days, I'm asking you to be intentional about your growth. I know it's not for everybody. Even this call, we had 43 people sign up. Only 14 people have showed up. I know it's not everybody that can commit their time, be here on time, and even put out all distractions. Okay. Um, it's for those who are willing and intentional about their growth and I'm willing to go ahead. So if you know me and you don't even sign up, that's okay, we don't have a beef. But I hope that you take this challenge. I really, really hope that you would invest your time and your money and have people work with you in this journey. And let's see the results we come up with by the end of this. Awesome. So going forward, if this class has been good for you, I want you to say yes. If it's not, uh, tell me honestly, no. Let me know. Who has benefited from this oh okay <laughs> <laughs> what's up oh it's been beneficial very it's been worth the time and everything okay to hear. learned a lot personally i've learned a lot in fact i've added to the little that i have in my 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 you know my personal development in particular, yes. I've learned to actually time for myself. There's something I call me time. A human being, I think that as the personalities we do have, we should also make time for ourselves. Me time. I think that's the only time you'll be able to identify your weaknesses and strengths. So then you can work on yourself better. Because most times you are busy moving about, trying to, you know, work with your friends. Everybody's coming at some point. 
But I think that if we also make time for me time, then we'll be able to identify where we are able to, where our strength lies, that we can re-strategize if things are not really working for us. So I think I've learned this uh, this evening and it's going to be helpful throughout the year. Hoping and praying to sign. Yeah. So thank you so, so very much for actually having this forum with us. It's been really beneficial. Mm-hmm. And I pray that after we've signed on, by the end of the 28-day challenge, there should be more. And we should, you know, we should continue to soar higher. higher. Yes, yes. Seriously, I, I am hoping for better. I'm challenging myself for better. I'm not leaving myself a chance, hoping that someone will see my application somewhere. No, I'm taking the steps that I need to go on. So that anything else that comes on board, it's a bonus. I'm doing my part, okay? Emanuela is asking any plans for students. No, so this is the plan for students and for adults and for whatever, okay? To me, don't look at the price, look at the investment you make. What is it to you? Okay, what value do you think it will give to you? As I said, this is not for everyone. Uh, This is not to somebody, see it as to yourself. As you go to school, you want a certificate at the end. Don't just go for the certificate and say, oh, I just did a 28 day thing. What testament, what does a certificate mean to you? That even if you don't get a job in a corporate world, how does it benefit your life going forward? That is how I want you to approach life. Okay, so see it as an investment in yourself. How much is your personal development what? Okay, how much value do you place on yourself? And see it as that. Can I send the link through by? Yes, I I will send the email, uh, the link via email. It's also in the chat so you can open it up. But I will send emails after this with the recording as well. So anybody who was lost in the middle can go back and check check on that okay so as we did a check-in where i was asking um what's up with you so i get to know you i want us to do a check out okay uh we are behind time and so for my checkout i want to ask on a scale of cut again okay because we had someone say nine how are you feeling right now are you feeling tired? Maybe this class was too stressful. You feel drunk. How are you feeling right now on a scale of cut? And I want you to end this sentence, continue the sentence. By this time next year, by January 19, 2023, I will be. So con- complete that. So write it in the chat for me. I would love to hear your responses. By January 19, 2023, I will be. That's your promise to yourself before we leave. Wow, Yaira says I'll be so impressed with my progress. That's amazing. Okay. Yolanda says I'm a six. How are you feeling right now? Nana, I've not heard from you in a while. You'll still be excited to see where you are. Amazing. Amazing. And I hope it will be even better than where you are right now. Because that is growth. Christmas said three. Three, I'm curious. Is it like you're coming to bite us or... <laughs> You're on the mood, <laughs> excited. I will congratulate myself. Um, Nana, I'm holding you up to this. That next year you are congratulating yourself. Beyond, above and beyond. Rosemont said I'm excited. This excitement is above and beyond the Rosemont. Okay. Chris, I said, I will be filled with so much excitement because of where I will be after striving through the year. My dear, you will not just strive. You will conquer. You will thrive. You will do amazing because you have purpose in your heart to do better. And with that vision, you realize that everything that you do, you add a sort, a bit of excellence to it. And you'll be proud of yourself. And I hope you have this desire in front of you every time. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Linda says, by January 2023, I hope I still have this inspiration I'm having right now. Mm, That is so important. I hope you do too. I hope you do too. So thank you so much for joining. I saw some gentlemen join, but I didn't hear them talk. Um, I hope they are here with us as well. Maybe they are driving. That's fine. You'll be flying without wings. Hey, Presta, be careful. Okay. (laughs) 
um thank you so much for joining the class i really really appreciate your time to be with me i'm blessed to have you and i hope to see you somewhere somehow keep um you have my email so you can still email me you have my number you can contact me let me be a part of your growth journey let me see how you go and anyhow i can encourage you i can lift you up trust me i'm available to you and if you're joining the 28th journey thank you so much for hopping on and trust me we are going to document where we are now so that by the end of the 28th we see where we are and then we'll know that this has been worth it so thank you and i wish you a blessed week i wish you a blessed year and i hope that whatever you've said on your mind you will be able to do above and beyond know that you are enough that whatever you said in your mind your dreams are valid and you can win everything yes whatever your goals are and i hope that now that you've reflected on how the year went you are refreshed and be able to go so thank you so much for joining me thank you and i'll see you soon some